Ricky. Great. <clears throat> well, thank you. Uh, really delighted to be here. And as Mark mentioned, we've got a, uh, an important topic to discuss. So we're going to dive right in, given, uh, given time. So um, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is start, uh, start with you, Amy. Can you just give the audience some perspective? Tell us about Pledge 1%. Um, you know, and, and what, what can a company expect uh, okay. from being a part of it? Great, yeah. So Pledge 1% is a global movement to create a new normal where giving back is baked into the DNA of companies of all sizes and stages, but preferably as early as possible. So movements are typically about fighting against a status quo. So the status quo we're fighting against is that in the past, most founders and companies felt like they needed to wait until they're much bigger and much more established and then give back. And we want to change this. And frankly, it's already a major shift is already happening, especially driven by the changing expectations of millennials. We're hearing from our companies and from our investors that increasingly this is not just the right thing to do, it's also the smart thing to do, especially when it comes to attracting and retaining great talent. So it's this shift that's really been driving and fueling the Pledge 1% movement. We've grown 150% a year since we were launched three years ago. Um, I'm excited to announce that as of today, thanks to Collision and so many of you, we've now reached 5,000 companies in over 100 countries. Uh, well done. And it, in fact, we had 100 people join the movement literally in the last two and a half days. So um, we've got an amazing range of companies, including early stage companies, uh, late stage companies like Media Math and Harry's. Um, and Postmates, uh, recent IPOs like DocuSign and industry um, leaders like Atlassian and Salesforce and Twilio. And already these companies that are part of Pledge 1% have ignited over a half a billion dollars of new philanthropy. And we're just getting started. So you had asked what to expect. Basically, Pledge 1% provides a framework for companies to contribute 1% of their time, product, profit, or equity to any cause of their choice. Uh, the money doesn't go through us. We're just here to empower and support you um, and uh, really encourage people to start early. Pledge 1% offers free consultation, lots of great resources, visibility, and access to amazing like-minded leaders like Jenna and Michael. Good. No, I appreciate that. So just to get some more context and color around really what it means for organization, we have both Michael and Jenna here who are members, and I know Amy sort of very deliberately refers to some of the companies as members. So can you guys give some perspective, um, you know, as a member, sort of why you joined and, and what it means to you? Maybe we can start you with you, Jenna. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, Media Math joined um, about two and a half years ago, three years ago, um, really looking for um, a way to have a scalable approach to our giving. Um, you know, we were kind of doing things in piecemeal and Pledge 1% really did lay out the framework that allowed us to say, okay, we're going to um, pledge 1% of our time, our technology, um, and our equity. And it has provided us with the ability to do a really good roadmap towards that. So we've been able to put policies in place that say all of our people get three days um, a year focused towards um, nonprofit activities with our actual tech. Um, we have a program that we run globally. Every 20 campaigns that are run in our system, we will fund um, an eyesight surgery for, um, for somebody with preventable blindness, and our clients can see it and our employees can see it actually in the technology. Um, we sent Christmas cards to our clients saying how many uh, eyesights they funded that year based on running campaigns in the system. Um, and then last summer, we pledged 1% of our equity and um, pledged 1%. You know, that can be a very difficult thing to do, um, but it gives, you know, the community that went with pledged 1% really helped guide us through that and give us advice on how to do it. That's great. So it's been what do you great. Think? Yeah, so, so, uh, Oops. Uh-oh. Do we have a mic problem? No. There we go. Oh, you're back. Um, you're back. So <clears throat> Elassian was one of the founding members of Pledge 1%. I think, like, the, the, the idea of philanthropy is uh, something very important to the founders of the company, and they've been doing it. And um, I think it was back in 2014 that they got together with Salesforce and kind of built this structure around it. Um, and Mike and Scott, the co-founders, 
of Atlassian. You know, they're founding members. It's built in the DNA of the company. One of the values of Atlassian is be the change you seek. And um, the idea is, like, don't just, you know, think about it. Do it, right? Like, get out there and do it. Um, and it's kind of funny because, actually, when we were acquired by Atlassian, we had a lot of similar values. And that was actually one of the reasons why I think this acquisition made so much sense. Um, ours was, we, we, we called it don't do nothing, which was sort of like, don't, just, <laughs> don't do nothing. We have do um, good better. Yeah. So it's yeah. the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Right. Um, in fact, um, you know, when I announced the acquisition to the company, we were at a company offsite, and the very next thing that we did was we went and built dog houses for an animal shelter in Phoenix. So this is sort of part of the DNA of the company. Yeah. But, you know, I think um, the, the, the most amazing thing about Pledge 1% was it just gave people a really easy standard to, like, follow. You know, as a founder, you're trying to figure out, like, how can I make a difference in the world? What, how much equity should I pledge? What, what does the structure, you have all these things, and there's so many companies that are participating in this structure to say like, hey, pledge 1% of your time, pledge 1% of your profit, pledge 1% of your equity, or just do one of those, you know, right. or, or give away 1% of your product. Um, Elastian does all four of those things in different ways. They have the days off where we all, um, go and, you know, you take off, I think it's five days at Atlassian and then we can take off and do volunteering work. Um, they have a, a program where you can have money that goes from your paycheck, a dollar a day that goes to Room to Read. Um, they're, um, they've actually created a, a whole foundation around the company that works with Pledge 1%. So it's a really big part of, you know, b both being an employee there, I think it's very important to the company and all the people at so as, as you and Jenna are talking, <clears throat> you know, you talk about values, and I get a sense of community. Um, it feels like the Pledge 1% is part of the overall strategy of the organization. Not, not a nice to do, but it's a part of doing business. I guess, Amy, from your perspective, is that what you're seeing? Do you see that when you think about philanthropy and citizenship and giving back, that it's much more of an enterprise strategy these days as opposed to an add-on at the back half? Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing a definite trend. I think in the past, like I mentioned, it used to be kind of at the end, on the side, yeah. and really just money. And now what we're <laughs> seeing is it's really at the beginning. It's really built into your core values. And I think like what you guys were talking about, I, I know, for example, like Twilio, one of their core values is about empowering others. And so they're working with their 1.6 million developers to leverage technology, Twilio technology, to support nonprofits and communication challenges. So that whole idea of like it's a reflection of your values yeah. and it's embedded into who you are. Um, and then I think it's also just not just money. It's, it's, your, it's your time. It's your talent. It's your voice. It's your hiring decisions. It's your business practices. It's really, you know, beyond just our four pillars. It's really about how do you leverage your company as a force for good. So the things I've heard, I hear force for good. We hear a movement. We talk about community. So from your, just from your perspective, we were talking about being a member of Pledge 1%. What, what is it, um, how do you interact? You had the announcement of, 5,000 members, 100 countries, which is huge. How do you all interact with other members at all? Or how, how do you, what does it mean to be a member of the community? I mean, I feel like for Media Math in the, you know, getting this started up, um, you know, a lot of like what you were saying, you, you, you don't necessarily know right. exactly what the right thing is to do. You know you want to do good better being part of Media Math, <laughs> um, but you need, you need some guidelines. So I think we, we really interacted with just other members of the community, with Salesforce, with Amy, with, you know, really just, right. um, just getting the advice. Good, good. Yeah, actually, for us, it was, um, you know, one of the things during the acquisition, being able to, 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 to point to all these programs and show how the, the, the company wasn't just a company, you know, a corporate structure. This is a, these are teams, these are people, and that um, that, that, that have all these interests and, and seeing all that for, for our people that were so interested in um, volunteering and, and doing good better, is it? Doing good better <laughs> in the world. I love that. That's awesome. Um, you know, it, it was like... Like, at the end of the day, that's what a company is, right? It's yeah. the people. It's the teams. And so, um, for us, this was, during the acquisition, it was a great way to show, like, this is going to be a great home for us. Like, we're just going to be so aligned with our values. Um, so, it was really important to us. And over the past year, it's been really important to making us feel like Atlassians instead of just trellis, as yeah. we used to say. 
That's great. So <clears throat> as, we, as we're hearing out uh, for the past few days, you know, the, the, their expectations are very high in the tech industry of, of, of companies and leadership. <clears throat> And that's certainly for big tech, but mid tech and small tech. So Amy, what's your sense of what, what, what are the benefits for companies to start early and pledge 1%? Because I think that's a part of your business yeah. model. Talk about that a bit. Definitely. I'd say, I mean, like four things come to mind. So one is, um, as I was saying earlier, it's not just the right thing, but the smart thing when it comes sure. to attracting and retaining great talent. Um, we all know it's very competitive for top yeah. talent. So I think that, you know, we hear a lot from our employees, like, our, our, excuse me, our members, like Salesforce, for example, does an employee survey every year, and they say that one of the top three reasons people come to work at Salesforce and one of the top three reasons they stay is because of their Pledge One programs. And we hear that again and again. I think DocuSign did a survey, and there was a write-in about what's good about DocuSign, and aside from like new leadership, the number one answer was DocuSign Impact. So yeah. it's definitely something that's really important when attracting talent. So you may as well like, you know, make your mark early. Like basically set your intent and get your employees excited about what you can do and aspire to in the future. Um, that's number one. Number two, I would say, is culture is a really hard thing to change later on. So, um, you know, so set your culture like in the beginning, and and this is part of the fabric. I mean, whether it's do good better, or you are the change you want to see, or you know, it's it's basically like I said with Twilio and with a lot of our companies, this is a reflection of who they are. Yeah. This is their essence. <clears throat> and so um, I'd say, you know, you want to bake that in from the very beginning. You don't want to wait super hard to change that later. Yeah. Um, I think the third thing is like scrappiness breeds like creativity. So. Um, I'm going to like use an Atlassian example. I hope you don't mind, Michael. But um, early on, Atlassian did an interesting twist on a freemium model where mm. instead of it just being free for you know, a certain number of licenses and then um, in the, you know, a paid level, they said, all right, $10 for 10 licenses, but those $10 go to Room to Read. And right. they were able to raise millions of dollars for Room to Read like long before their IPO and be one of the top corporate partners worldwide for Room to Read. And in the process, like really, you know, get so much closer with their customers and their partners because this was something that they were doing together and actually like felt that they were creating. Um, we also had like DocuSign and Box and a number of our companies use their products in really creative ways to address issues around disasters and um, first responders. So that's where they didn't have the cash, but they leveraged their product and their incredible tech, you know, and their, their intellect and their connections to say, hey, we can come together and create a better system for how first responders are dealing with this in a cloud-based way if we all come together and make this happen. Uh, so, so that's, and I think the fourth is, and, and Michael's going to speak, but we were just talking about this in the hallway, it's just easier, you know, so I think that you certainly, especially from the money standpoint, you can do it late, and, you know, kudos to Media Mouth, who just, like, set aside their equity last year, but it's, it's really a lot easier, especially on the profit, like Harry's did, or on, you know, an equity side, to set it, like, really a day one, when you're in total control, and you, you have the ability, and maybe I'll, maybe put you on the spot if you want, so you can describe yeah. it. Being a founder, Are you, you're on. Yeah. Um, being a founder, you know, like you're I would with, take mine off and give it to you, but yeah. yeah. Um, this was this was sort of a challenge for me personally, just trying to understand as we as you get it later, and now that you got these big numbers during acquisition, and you're trying to make this, these choices. Like if you can do this early on, right. when it's easy, you get everyone on board. It's much easier to just bake it in and just say, like, look, this is the standard. Everyone's doing this. This is an easy thing that we can do. So if you can't hear, Michael's making the point of getting getting everyone on board early uh, and really have be a part of culture makes creates a little bit of momentum inside an organization. One of the things I'm interested in, Jenna, from your perspective, because we're talking about culture and organizations and strategy, is I, you know, one of the things I know a lot of us are struggling with, it's not specific to the tech industry, is talent recruitment. Mm -hmm. and retention. I'm wondering, from your perspective, has your involvement in Pledge 1% helped you in that regard? Has it been a differentiator? Does it give you a competitive advantage as you think about those things? I mean, sure. I mean, it certainly, it certainly helps as, um, as something to point to that shows what your purpose is, right? Yeah. People want to work somewhere that they uh, feel like they're, you know, they and working. I'll try this one. We're there creative we here. We're just rolling. <laughs> yes. We're rolling. Ready. We're ready. Teamwork. Yeah. I mean, you know, specific, um, specific in the marketing industry, right? Marketing is um, under a bit of fire right now. And, yeah. you know, MediaMath is very focused on 
um, making marketing that people love. We see it as a really important part of the economy and of people's uh, experiences and think it's really important. And, you know, specific as it relates to Pledge 1% and how we talk about that is enabling really impressive nonprofits to become very great marketers. Um, great. And, you know, I think that is equally as important to make sure that you are driving to good in the world yeah. through enabling wonderful marketing. Um, and so, yes, of course, the second that you can pick up a phone and talk to a potential candidate and say, you know, listen, this is MediaMath's vision for the world, and this is our vision in our industry, and this is our vision as it relates to, um, you know, not just making profit, but, you know, really driving nonprofits to be successful with their goals. It I makes think a difference. Great. Look, and I think we have an emerging uh, expectation in the workforce that companies are doing good. Uh, and there's an expectation that we do good. So in the, uh, in the two minutes we have left, uh, we're going to be focused here. Um, what, let's just say each of you sort of take your chance, and Michael, I'm going to give you, uh, you can take the mic first since you're going to need the mic. Um, what, what's the one message you want the audience to walk away with based on your perspective with 1%? What's the one takeaway you want to deliver for the message from each of you? Uh, I would say um, think about it now. Mm -hmm that um, this is something that's easy to do earlier. And so it's something that you should think about and you can use it as a great recruiting tool, as a great way to build culture. Um, and so you should do it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think um, for media math, certainly a similar thing, but it is, um, you know, we have people that work at our companies. People want to do good things with their time, and um, we've found that Pledge 1% has been a really um, easy, impactful way for us to uh, take that step and make a difference. So um, it's been important for our place in the world and, uh, and for our employees to feel real value. I think I'll take this just in case. So um, I think I just want to say that, I mean, I, I love that we're talking about Pledge 1%, but I want to call out that Pledge 1% is, is all of us. Pledge 1% yes. is a movement. And what's really amazing is that the movement's constantly co-creating uh, the best practices and the tool books. And it's, it's very open source. Somebody will create something, and then somebody else will add to it. And we have this ethos called Pledge It Forward, which is really this idea that don't just take the pledge. I mean, take the pledge, but don't just take the pledge. What can you do to kind of reach out and invite, encourage, and empower everyone around you in your ecosystem to also join with you and, and really reinforce this idea that no one's too small or too early to, to really make a difference in the world? So I, I think my closing note on just that point would just be to say, um, we invite you to join us. The pledge itself takes 30 seconds. You're just setting your intent. If you go to p1.today, that's the shortcut, um, and, and sign up. And then right away, you'll be eligible for a free pledge success call where we'll just be like your concierge and help you with the resources. And you can keep coming back to the well as much as you want. We're, we're just here to support you. Um, and also say that we're hiring. So if you're interested in that's working great. for an amazing movement like this, like please let us know. And we've got a booth out there. And you can also find us on you know members at pledge1percent.org. Uh, but we'd, we'd love to hear from you. We're out of time, but I know there was a question that came in uh, around the typical breakdown of pledges between time and equity and product and profit or revenue. So um, is there a quick answer to that in 10 seconds? or? Sure, sure. I mean, this doesn't add to 100% because many people take multiple pledges, but we find that about, I think about roughly, and this changes all the time, but about 60% of our members have at least a time pledge component. Good. The other pledges tend to be about like 30%, 20 to 30% do uh, product, equity, and profit. Um, and, and like I said, I won't go into all the permutations <laughs> of the mixes of all those, but uh, that's just kind of a rough, rough overview. Well, Amy, Michael, Jenna, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, keep the movement alive, and thank you all for your time.